Shalom. Last week I marked the 27th uh, yard site for my grandmother. And I have great memories of my grandmother. She lived with us from the time I was very young. And I remember all the wonderful games we would play together and how much I would annoy her by asking her questions incessantly, especially the question, why? Why this? Why that? And to every answer she gave, I would ask why? And then why and why again until my grandmother would finally say, why is a crooked letter? That was her answer. When my children were little and they would ask me why, I would say, kaha, because. Because that was the answer. And, and we get to the point in life where that answer of kaha or because just doesn't satisfy our needs. I'm reminded of that because in this week's parasha, parashat chukat, we kind of get that why is a crooked letter or kaha or because answer when we talk about the para aduma better known in English as the red heifer or the red cow, a mysterious ritual in which the ashes of a red cow are mixed with a solution of water in order to purify the impure. But because the Kohen who makes the mixture becomes impure, we are left with what Rabbi Wolf Kelman of Blessed Memory used to call a paradox for the para aduma. In contrast to such ethical teachings as the Haftal Recha Kamocha, you should love your neighbor as yourself, Lo Tignov, you shall not steal, where the reasons behind the mitzvot are so clear, the rationale behind the rules of the Paraduma are not clear. And the only thing that we're told in the Torah is. Zorchukara Torah. This is a law of the Torah. Now, we're, there are all different kinds of mitzvot, of laws, chukim and, mushpa, and mishpatim, but the one takeaway we have from this kind of chok is that there's a category of law, of chok, for which there's no explanation. And while that may bother some of our modern sensibilities, while the answer, you have to do it because you have to do it because God said so, or simply, kacha, because, doesn't really work. I heard an explanation a few years ago from a dear friend and colleague, Rabbi Mark Greenspan of Oceanside, New York, which spoke to me. Rabbi Greenspan put this teaching of the paraduma in a context which made sense. He noted that not long after this teaching, in this parasha, we will read of the deaths first of Moshe's sister Miriam, and then of their brother Aharon. And following the death of Miriam, we have, of course, a story of um, Moshe being commanded to speak to the rock and hitting the rock, and Moshe being punished. And one might think that Moshe is at that point in his life where he could say, you know what, I've had it! I've had it. I've done everything I've been told to do, and now I'm going to be punished. I'm not going to be privileged to to enter into the land of Israel. I'm losing. I've lost my sister, and then he loses his brother, and I get punished on top of all this. Instead, Moshe has to make peace with a situation that has no explanation. Moshe has to resort not to reason, but to faith. He has to fall back on his faith in order to make peace with his situation. And there might not be any better answer than kacha, or because. When wrestling with the grief that he has to deal with, at the loss of when dealing with the deaths of his siblings. And perhaps the teaching of the paraduma, of the red heifer, prepares him for the notion that sometimes in life we have to simply accept certain things on faith and, uh, and wrestle with our grief, even when there is no explanation. May we all have the strength to find 
in our faith the ability to go on and do what we have to do, as Moshe did, for he continued to lead despite the pain and the void in his life after the deaths of his siblings and uh, after finding that sometimes there are no satisfactory answers. But there is nevertheless an important place for faith in all of our lives. Shabbat Shalom. Sur mi shelo achanu, sur mi shelo.